So what we have up here is actually a, the current architecture of um, uh, CloudStack. Uh, our um, agent manager uh, down here is our messaging and, and bus, basically. Uh, and we talk to a bunch of resources that we write to talk to, the, um, to all the physical resources. Uh, and above are controlled by different um, managers. Uh, they, they all have their own uh, processes and, uh, uh, that they install. Uh, and, and at the very top is our uh, web services API layer. Um, so we are actually, since our 2.2 uh, um, release, we have been actively moving to this type of architecture uh, um, because we believe every, um, there would be a lot of people who needs to come in and make changes to CloudStack to add functionality, to, find, to add capabilities, is, and we put in um, APIs for people to, uh, to segment different portions of CloudStack so that, so, so that they know where to add. Uh, so um, let me go into that a little bit. Uh, from the uh, bottom up, uh, once again, th these are our resources. And in CloudStack's terms, our resources are basically our interfaces to the actual physical uh, hardware. Uh, so for each different type of physical hardware, there are there are different um, uh, uh, resource. As we have we will have a VMware resource. There's there's also a SAN server resource, and even for different versions of uh, SAN server, there are uh, different resources just to handle the the minute details um, uh, from version to uh, version. Um, and 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 to talk to the resources, the management server uh, always goes through a. Um, um, in, in, the, in the original version is our agent manager. Uh, here, what we're, what we're trying to convey is that the agent manager's um, communication mechanism can be, can, can be a message bus. Uh, and it, it is today, I think in Sherdeep's um, uh, presentation, you saw the uh, resource for KVM, the resource for OVM actually runs in a JVM that, that is uh, uh, deployed remotely from the management server. And their communication is done all through JSON. So our, our agent API at this level is all, is all JSON. And um, it, it will take a little bit getting used to because a lot of our code still says oh, it's, it's Java, um, but at the end they all translate into J JSON before it goes, uh, goes down to the resource. Uh, um, above that, there's um, a set of uh, core functionalities that uh, the management server um, uh, provides. Things like being able to cluster the management servers, provide different nodes in, in, in that cluster so you can uh, scale out the, the management server to handle different nodes. Those are resource management, which handles the, the connections to the resource, how to send messages to the resource, uh, detecting whether a resource has dropped out or uh, come, uh, uh, come into, the, uh, come, come into uh, management. There's the job management, which um, is the async job queue. Um, there is alert and event management, and then there is database access. And all these things are all layers so that the, the um, top portion of our code, where majority of our business logic is, has, do not actually have to understand uh, underneath. So it is possible to swap the infrastructure out without affecting and what is um, above us. Uh, now then, and, and it comes to, um, in CloudStack, then you, you need to lo uh, look at well, what does CloudStack actually does? Uh, uh, a lot of the things that CloudStack does it would be in this kernel, which uh, actually does a lot of our orchestration and pieces. Uh, and this is important to uh, uh, segment out because modifications in here is, is tricky at best uh, because you are actually talking to physical resources. Uh, there are a lot of uh, problems on, on whether or not the operation would time out uh, whether or not the operation succeeded, who um, exactly how do you even um, get that operation to work on that uh, a particular resource, ours, and, uh, um, and things like that. So in our kernel, it, it's all about uh, how to orchestrate the VM operations, how to orchestrate volume movement, and, and things like that uh, inside this kernel. And, and we uh, put around it our services API uh, to make it so that uh, uh, people who wants to use the operations we already defined can just use it without thinking about it, and and other people can add code into CloudStack uh, by adding um, 
by adding features that might operate on the database, might operate on, on, on other things, and it's without having to think about this, this particular piece. As, as, and then we also have what we call the plugin architecture. Uh, so uh, our plugins are really two different parts. Uh, the, it depends on what you want to modify in CloudStack. Uh, plugins are, are, are for changing behavior in, in CloudStack and adding capabilities into CloudStack, right? Uh, so we have interfaces that we, we define and that says, you know, in order to modify this behavior, you have to implement something. And, and these are, these are the, um, uh, at this point, the plugins that you can, and you, you can add in. And I have a slide later that talks about how, uh, how these are structured. Uh, and over here then is really the assistance or, or services that we actually, uh, you can actually provide. And a lot of these uh, current CloudStack code provides certain services, for, for example, HA, uh, where HA plugs into the kernel and says, uh, so, well, I, I really want to just monitor uh, if a VM has gone away, a VM has died, and then once once I see that it's, it's gone, I'm gonna I'm gonna work as a uh, as an admin to restart the, the 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 VM, and I won't work in a special way uh, such that I have some secret APIs or something like that 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 you can you you can and and go through, but instead uh, he's really just run, helping run operations and for, for the administrator. So a lot of people can and actually add code here in, the, in, in this portion that says, as I, I want this particular behavior or I want this particular monitoring of our cloud stack uh, and, or, or the VMs underneath, and I just want to be able to drive that through this API. Um, and, and above here is still our basically our REST API, and you will be able to add in different uh, we have architecture such that you can add in different types of API or different un, um, uh, compliances to other API structures as above and, and still map it in, to underneath uh, to CloudStack. Uh, and here would be our uh, ACL and, and checks before someone, someone is able to use it. Is there uh, any questions about this? Or was that? Yes. Can you use the mic? Uh, is there a transactional semantics around configuring multiple resources in response to a request? Uh, sorry, I, I still can. <clears throat> Do you have a concept of transactional semantics when you're configuring multiple resources in response to a request? Yeah, so uh, when you're configuring, we actually do not allow transaction semantics across the resources because the underneath hardware uh, is not um, uh, a lot of them do not have that type of semantics. Uh, so what we what we want to make sure of is that when you're implementing a certain resource, the operations that it carry out has to be item potent and it has to be a repeatable res uh, um, operations. And and clouds that would we try operations and, and um, uh, for you if something fail, uh, but we do not go. Oh, I, I'm going to go roll back all these. Um, uh, or, or you can throw an exception inside that and have it roll back. Uh, right. Hello, question on um, roughly how is um, are all of these in user space code? The the plugins and all of those things, and the kernel piece is also in user space. Yeah, code? Uh, um, the kernel might be a confusing term. It, it is not OS kernel. Uh, this is the cloud stack kernel. Uh, and all the whole thing is in in user space. This this is all uh, Java code at this point. Uh, when, when, what what we mean by kernel is that when you go look at um, the operations that needs to be uh, run, and uh, these are the ones on, on that actually have to talk to the resource and you, and and orchestrate the resource uh, uh, operations. So okay. So uh, basically, uh, this is uh, our definition of the kernel module. Uh, uh, it knows how to orchestrate long-running processes because uh, when you talk to a resource, it may take up to minutes. It may no, it may take up to uh, it, may, it may never return. I mean, that that's uh, happened to uh, to us quite often. And 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 you have you have to be able to uh, uh, be able to time out. Have to be able to uh, uh, orchestrate uh, uh, those those. Um, those type of um, operations, and that's what kernel module do. Uh, and 
there, there's people who under, who who likes to work in that um, that area, and there's people who wouldn't. Um, and kernel module exposes it so that people do not who doesn't want to work in that area can actually still can add functionalities into cloud stack uh, uh, without uh, understanding these processes. Uh, and and basically inside I, the kernel module uh, to configure how uh, the kernel works, we we have our uh, plugin API to execute those functions. And for uh, plugins, is uh, like I said, there's various ways to add capability to uh, Cloud Stack. Uh, now they each have their own interface, as, and all operations must be item potent. Um, and we, once we call the plugin, and at that end, we check to make sure that there are no database transactions that you can you can reverse. So uh, from there on, it is up to you to make sure our, every information that we send to you is is persisted, that you can repeat them and things like that. Uh, right? And we make sure that uh, the plugin and modules should only up, um, compile against our our um, API. I uh, module uh, which only contains the interfaces to clearly uh, uh, so that we don't have any crossovers between between that code boundaries. So, uh, what exactly is a uh, you know a plugin? I think and if you take a look at our have looked at our Confluence website, you might you might have run across uh, uh, like one on one where where we talk about our adapters and and, and things like that. Uh, and I kind of want to show what what is a plugin, and, and and a plugin is basically a package of two two sets of jars. What one set would go into a uh, cloud stack to run and uh, help run the business lo uh, logic. Uh, one set will go, go into uh, uh, a resource that may run co-located with the with the hardware, um, uh, because um, I think as Sherdy mentioned, um, um, cloud stack is. It, Cloud Stack clearly defines what is control path and what is data path, and a lot of the um, uh, work that needs to be done on um, inside the data center, uh, uh, close to the hardware, uh, is it needs to be needs to be co-located with that hardware, uh, and management server is just not there, uh, so uh, management server cannot be in that uh, portion, um, and and the business logic though is in it what runs within and Cloud Stack's management server, um, and when we look at the plugin API, there, then there's actually multiple sets of APIs here, um, and and there's actually another slide that tells you where 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 you can make the modifications. And so one plugin may actually implement several functions because you're actually implementing and several features. Uh, yeah, that's basically just goes over. And uh, as an example, uh, so one, one thing I, I kind of want to go through uh, is our OVS plugin. O OVS is our implementation of SDN, and right, I and what it actually have to implement is two different interfaces. There's the network guru, um, because uh, the, our in Cloud Stack, the network guru defines our network. Uh, it understands how to segment the network. It understands how to issue I, uh, what are the IP addresses that needs to be issued. Well, if it's IPv6 IP addresses, it can be issued there, right? So someone can actually add in that type of um, uh, a functionality into Cloud Stack. Uh, but then at the same time, it also is a network element because as um, SDN and means that it, um, the 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 paths are configured when we statically configure them on the hypervisor. Uh, so as a VM is started and things like that. Then we inform the network element and says, "Oh, this VM is being started. This this was the IP address that was issued you know, to it from the network guru, uh, and here's the MAC address and 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 things of that nature. And now you have to go program it, uh, and and someone and the network element can can actually do that work and do the programming." And so these are the things that are are available. Uh, Today, to implement specific functionalities that Cloud Stack needs, as uh, as I said, a network guru implements the network isolation. It it understands what is the physical network and how to do isolation on that physical network, and what are the IP addresses that that can be uh, used and issued. Uh, a network element and and helps with the network services available to the VMs. 
things like DNS, DHCP, load balancing, VPN, or forwarding. And, 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 and there's actually much more. Our, and so for example, our net scaler would be in, in, implemented as a network element. Um, uh, that only supports load balancing today. Uh, and more features can be added uh, on top of that. Uh, we also have um, the idea of a deployment planner where uh, people have different ideas where uh, where a VM should be should be deployed and its volume should be um, uh, should be created, um, uh, and for HA HA also has its own um, uh, uh, plugins where uh, people can um, write in code that says, oh, in order to see whether or not a VM is down or not, uh, you need to you, you, um, I can do this for you. You know, because we may not completely understand the, the, the uh, technology deployed in the data center to investigate whether or not a VM has, has gone down or not. Uh, and be, being able to fence if a VM, uh, fence off the VM from accessing the network and, and hardware uh, and, and uh, uh, disk as before we, we can restart it. Uh, so uh, we, we have these sets of um, uh, uh, plugins where you can actually write. And uh, quite a few of them would not have resources. So, for example, a deployment planner may not have uh, resources that it needs to um, uh, that uh, that needs to be deployed, and it's uh, purely a management server uh, 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 plugin. And um, but you can and you can write that. Uh, uh, for example, if you were, you were plugging into some sort of a, um, uh, a workload engine that only deploy inside data center, then you might have a resource that. That uh, uh, runs and co-located with that uh, uh, um, uh, workload engine, and and then there's there's a small piece on on management server that con contacts that uh, resource. Is there any questions regarding this? Yeah. So uh, I have a question. So if you have extending some of the network offerings through the plugins mm -hmm. uh, do we have to do anything extra in terms of these services being available from the existing uh, UI or uh, are there any UI extension points uh, so today we do not have a pluggable UI where these things can actually expose its own own UI we do have a way for you to plug in a web services API I uh, and but the UI you will have to actually modify uh, so there are entry points to configure the, the, the things that you want to add, add um, but, there, but there's no UI today. Uh, and this is on a roadmap to actually add, add something like that. Uh, the, two, the two things that's missing in the plugin and interface, I think, and is one is this pluggable UI. The other one is a way for it to update its schema uh, independent of cloud stack. Uh, because whatever code you, you have may have its own database schema. Um, Can you um yeah uh, what 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 is a host allocator does mm, okay yeah can be a, more specific sorry so uh, host allocators are are ways to um to find which host to deploy the VM on um, deployment planner is different deployment planner is a heuristics based algorithm um. But then, and once you pass, once you went through the, uh, went past the heuristics, then there's also physical attributes that you you have to you have to um, consider. Uh, so, for example, if you are deploying on uh, VMware, uh, it reserves a certain set of uh, resources uh, that says, well, you cannot deploy it here because uh, um, I have to reserve enough for HA. A. So uh, there's, there's there's algorithms that needs to um, take that into consideration. Uh, when it's a VMware hypervisor, um, or when you're doing sensor, uh, uh, something similar. Uh, each VM, there, there, there might be overhead for memory. So the VM may take a, um, one gig, but then there's actually another 200 megabytes of uh, memory that sensor uh, uh, um, adds on to uh, each VM because it needs that to do mapping and things like that. Uh, so each host allocator uh, is, uh, um, are things that uh, gives you that capability. Uh, depending on what hypervisor, and 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 so then, and this also, this question also goes back to this because uh, when when we look at 
uh, the difference between a plugin, a server uh, resource, and an adapter. Um, this is this is what we're talking about because as a server resource, a um, the server resource that talks to the um, uh, send server hypervisor, you you will write a server resource, but then you will also write a host allocator because it has a specific different way of of, of allocating to its host, determining whether or not a host can actually a, a deploy that VM. Um, so then then a plugin um, would contain both of these. In that case. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, if you want to do something like uh, affinity rules or anti-affinity rules, uh, which of these plugins would you uh, customize? Yeah, so the affinity rules and anti-affinity rules would be in the deployment planner because uh, to us it would be heuristics and, and these type of rules in, in, inside there. So uh, if you wanted to say that you know, a part is a failure domain and uh, I wanted to de deploy VMs so that no two VMs are in the same part, Right. Uh, then I could do some uh, a custom algorithm like that. Right. And, and and actually, we have that for for a customer today. Uh, we um, when we first started, we we thought the idea of uh, VMs must be a, a, that users want their VMs concentrated close to each other because then, or, or at least administrators would want that because then you can take advantage of the network locality, right? Uh, so that it doesn't go over a core a core switch. Uh, but turns out. Uh, depending on your deployment, um, we have users that, that comes back and says, oh, what we're doing is Hadoop instances, and what we really want is them spread across our failure boundaries as instead of uh, being concentrated. And, and we've written uh, deployment planners that uh, does exactly that. We, we spread them across all, all parts and clusters before, before it gets repeated. Uh, okay. So it, it appears that host allocator and deployment planner are very closely related. Can you tell us, first of all, which gets processed first and what the dividing line between the two is? Right. Uh, so deployment planner is um, gets called first. Uh, deployment planner gives you, according to the uh, heuristics, which which set of clusters you want to you want to deploy to, and then and from there, then we 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 go through each host allocator and says, for this cluster, pick me a host. Uh, things like that. Then same thing with the storage pool allocators. So, so host allocator is cluster specific then. Uh, well, so host rather allocator, host allocator is only going to make decisions once a cluster has been selected by the deployment that's center. Right. So, uh, to add a plugin into CloudStack is, is um, uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, when when we looked at CloudStack before, we we've always expected CloudStack to de be deployed in, in an environment where we're not sure what the technology is, as uh, where we, uh, we may not completely understand every single technology in, inside. Uh, so we had ori um, originally had thought that uh, we w there, there's a lot of professional services involved in deploying CloudStack, uh, where um, we come up with a switch that we don't understand or, or a router that we don't understand. Someone has to write, the, uh, write that type of code. And so then we put um, most, how we put together CloudStack in this components.xml. Uh, and I think I have an example. Uh, so in, in this components.xml, uh, there would be a set of adapters, for example, and this is for, uh, for the storage pool uh, uh, adapter. Uh, that says, as, well, to run CloudStack, we're going to run it with two different um, um, types of uh, allocators for storage pool, um, or and, and there's a, a bunch of, of other uh, other things, and um, so that uh, people can and, and and look at it and says, well, if I have no local storage, then I don't even want to deploy this adapter, uh, or if I don't have, uh, I don't want the first fit storage. I only want on the user dispersing and storage uh, um, pool allocators. Uh, so. Uh, so that's all controlled by this components.xml, uh, and then and cloud, when CloudStack starts, then and CloudStack will load all that uh, appropriately. Um, and as part, of, so uh, that that is part of CloudStack, the product, right? right? And as part of this um, uh, move over to open source, then then we we look at it as CloudStack, uh, how CloudStack should function as a uh, as a platform. 
Um, and, and components.xml uh, today is our homegrown product. Uh, and we're looking at, at possibly converting over to some sort of a, com a different type of component framework uh, uh, to, to do these things. And, um, but uh, then we welcome any contributions or ideas uh, in, in what, what framework to use. One of the things that we're looking at is uh, OSGI, which um, has been famously used by Eclipse as, as a way to, uh, to modify Eclipse's um, uh, capabilities. As, and and we, I think we can apply that to cloud stack. Now, I, so uh, I, I want to specifically point out this pluggable service definition. And so the pluggable service definition is a way for for the elements to, uh, for the adapters to expose API that would be executed through, uh, through CloudStack. Uh, uh, so when you, when, when you put that in, and um, our um, CloudStack will actually go through and, and locate all the commands that, uh, that is being exposed by, 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 by this service. Uh, and then and the same REST API can be used to, to, to execute uh, things inside that. Can I ask a question? So we use uh, standard uh, dependency injection to uh, wire the components together? Yeah, so well, we actually use um, CG, CGLib, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, this, in, in here, what we do is we define the implementations. And then in, cloud, uh, in CloudStack, we use CGLib to, to put them together by, uh, all you have to say, say is, all, all I want is this particular interface, this particular manager, and the implementation is is provided for you when when the when, uh, when your class is instantiated. Uh, so, so this is kind of a sequence flow for for deploy VM. Now, deploy VM would be an operation within within the kernel because uh, because it involves orchestrating a huge set of um, uh, resources. Uh, and I, I wanted to uh, show that to show where are the things that uh, uh, the kernel had uh, put out to, to expect people to make changes. Uh, now, everything in orange here would be basically an adapter or a plugin. And, and then the, the, the rest is kind of um, our uh, code that's uh, existing and in, in CloudStack. Uh, so uh, when a deploy VM request comes in, and the first thing that will happen is we do uh, ACL checks, and we send them. Uh, we send these a, a, um, objects over to to uh, adapters called security checkers that allows you to uh, uh, check whether or not the end user, the, the the caller, is a administrator or if it's an end user. If it's end user, it goes to a different set of security checks to make sure that that, that end user is the owner of every object that that's there. Uh, um, and uh, if it's an administrator, then we check to make sure uh, that administrator is the domain admin for that for, for that end user and has the has the ability to make changes to that end user's uh, uh, system. Um, and then we make we allocate entities inside I Cloud Stack that uh, uh, basically and basically that's us creating uh, entities in our database to to uh, to represent that particular operation um, where we allocate the VM. Um, and then, and um, uh, virtual manager would then says, okay, I, I allocated the VM. Somebody else needs to take care of uh, how to allocate the NIC. And when we take care of allocating the NIC, the uh, network manager then goes to the network guru and says, I, I have this NIC going to be deployed in your network. Uh, you're, you're the network guru responsible for that network. Give me an IP on, on, um, uh, with, uh, for which the, um, the VM can start. Uh, and once that's been and, and done, then we also go to storage and says allocate a volume in the database, make sure our, uh, things are okay, uh, and then we uh, schedule the, the the job into the async queue. Uh, uh, so I don't have a shared deep um, uh, uh, PowerPoint here, and th so that that would be the, the job between our our West API and and the kernel, uh, and we schedule that. And then we return back and says, okay, here's the job ID and here's the VM ID. Hey, and, uh, and the caller uh, from there on will query the job results. They can also go and, and call get VM on the, on, on the ID hey, and, and see what this current status is. 
but uh, uh, to see if the deploy job itself has finished, then it, they, they just keep querying with the job ID. Um, Uh, yeah, so the LDAP off would be one of these security checkers. Uh, it would be a sp special implementation for that security checker. Uh, so the process itself doesn't change, but who you're talking to to make that authentication um, is, is implemented by the adapters. Yes? Yeah, is each of the, the allocate steps a separate transaction, or what actually gets committed to the so, database? So uh, at this point, we actually, this, this one is um, part of the same transaction because here, there is no resource uh, uh, being contacted. Uh, it's merely creating the, the objects in cloud stack so that we can represent and properly what, what is the current state of the of the system. When we call these allocate VMs, here there is no operations to the, to 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 the resources. Yeah, that's the next slide. I so I'll, I mean, if you notice here, I, 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 we we're there's actually. It is not executed by by, by a job thread. Uh, it's actually executed by by the uh, Tomcat request thread at, at this point. Um, so now then, and we we have a set of uh, uh, thread queues uh, uh, in each in each management server. Uh, once that job has been scheduled uh, here, uh, then so, uh, then the management and server will pick it up and deliver it to one of the one of our job threads. Uh, and the job thread then says, oh, this is a deploy VM. We already have all the objects acts created in our database. I'm going to start the, the execution process as to, to get it uh, started on the resource. Uh, so we inform the user VM manager. Uh, this is a user VM. If it was a DOMR, we would have informed um, the uh, virtual router manager um, um, or, or one of our system VM managers. Uh, and and then and that manager says, okay, I, I prepare everything I need to prepare for that user VM. Um, I'm going to call the generic code that to start all VMs. Um, um, and it calls the and that in our code that's the virtual machine manager. Uh, uh, calls the start VM. Virtual machine manager then talks to the deployment planner and says, uh, I got to start a VM. You got to uh, give me the host and the storage pool that that's required. And here, actually, the deployment planner would then also talk to the host allocator. Uh, but that, that's a little much detail, so I didn't put it in. It, 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 it actually would talk to the host allocator to find a host, uh, talk to the storage pool allocator to find a uh, storage pool to place the volumes, um, returns back. And then and, and the virtual machine manager then talks to the network manager and says, OK, here is the destination that this VM is supposed to start at. Uh, now you've got to prepare all the NICs for that VM um, so that, so that uh, you can, uh, we can actually start it. Um, and for uh, the network manager, then would we'll talk to the network guru and says, "Well, this VM is started. Make sure all the resources are available." So here we would uh, we serve VLANs, for example. Uh, if it was the first VM in that network to start, uh, uh, we would issue IP addresses. If it was not issued at this point, because the network guru can decide, uh, it is it's not a static IP address. Uh, they want to be able to dynamically uh, change the IP address. As, and, and that can be executed at that point. Um, and once the network Google comes back and says, OK, here's all the information, um, then and the network manager would talk to all the network elements in that network and says, look, this NIC is about to be started. Do whatever you need to do to make sure that this, um, this, this VM can participate in your services. As, and and um, you, know, you can imagine a firewall might, might I do a, a firewall um, uh, processes and and then and this network element would call its its resources to make sure all, all the information is prepared for this um, uh, for, for for this particular VM. Um, when when that comes back, uh, then the virtual machine manager then talks to the storage manager and says, "Now you need to be able to prepare your 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 volumes." Um, and storage manager would go check and says, "Well, this VM is using a particular template." Uh, I got to make sure that template is running on that particular primary storage, uh, and the template manager may actually be making calls to the to its own resources and says, "Copy the uh, template onto this primary storage if it's not already there." Um, and and finally, when that all has been done, and um, then the virtual machine manager would make a call uh, to a hypervisor resource and says, "Start the VM." 
and when uh, when that uh, start the VM is done, then we will store the job uh, results. Uh, and and actually at, at the end of this, we 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 have um, uh, events that 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 gets um, uh, fired to uh, event listeners that says, oh, the VM has now been started. Or uh, and and even before that, we would say, oh, the VM has uh, um, that the VM is about to start. Uh, things like that. So if you don't want to be actually in the control path and all you're uh, interested is in, is monitoring, you can actually monitor those type of events. Hello, I have a question on the relationship between job ID and uh, VM ID. Are they uh, one on one mapping? Uh, no, because you can start a VM multiple times. And in Cloud Stack, a VM is a persistent object. It's, it's different from Amazon. And so uh, a, a VM ID, uh, so for example, when you start, uh, let, let's say the very first job that was executed is the very first VM, then they both will have one. But maybe the tenth time you started, that the job ID would be ten, and and the VM ID would be one. So, uh, so the two different things. Uh, if something happens to the management server at some point through this process, what happens? Yeah, that's a that, that's a good question. And um, so, for management server, are uh, all these things are inside the job. Uh, is recording the job. So for uh, today, what we do is inside inside the virtual machine manager, as it goes through each of these steps, it writes down the step that it, it, it is at. Uh, uh, so so it does a, basically a checkpoint, right? right? And then and if something failed, uh, underneath uh, in Cloud Stack, I think in this slide, I I was showing uh, our cluster management. And so uh, someone is responsible for notifying other, uh, other, other nodes in this management cluster that this node has gone down. Um, and someone will go back and roll back those, uh, those operations. Hello. Yeah, um, in that uh, message flow diagram that you had over here, these two slides, roughly um, what is the latency it takes from the right to the beginning of saying, okay, deploy this VM to the time the actual VM gets deployed in terms of, uh, is it seconds, minutes? And that, that's a good question. And, and so let's say if I was running with a simulator, it would take seconds. And, and if I was talking, talking with a physical resource, right, uh, then it really depends on, on, on the physical resource itself. Uh, so for example, uh, um, to start a VM in, in a sense server takes maybe about 10, 15 seconds, and um, uh, to VMware, it, it might take a little bit longer. Uh, um, and, and it also depends on, on the work that needs to be caught, uh, done. Uh, for example, right here, uh, or actually right here, where we, where we need to copy the template onto the primary storage, it, it's the very first time that template has been used and is, it, 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 um, and is available on that primary storage. The copying can take minutes. Uh, so right. If it's a 10 gig, then it depends on your network speed uh, that before it finishes. Now, I, I want to create like multiple VMs all with the same image. So I want to instantiate a whole bunch of things. Is there some stuff that you can kind of just optimize out or just do it once? And and there, when you're trying to do a, uh, like an operation of trying to start up 100 VMs, right. um, are there any optimizations you do in CloudStack? Yeah, we... Um, Let's say if it's hundred VMs for the same for for with the same template, uh, then 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 this template copy itself only happens once if it's to the same primary storage. Uh, uh, um, now, uh, in terms of can CloudStack execute a uh, uh, hundred VM starts, uh, we in our roadmap uh, we are actually doing something like the apps where where you can and say I want to do a hundred VMs off the same template. Uh, but today you you will orchestrate that. Outside of cloud stack in, in, in the script somewhere. Yeah, I got a question about the um, storage allocator. Where is it here in the sequence flow? Yeah, so uh, right right here um, in the deploy. I didn't want to draw it out because it, I got a little too detailed, and I really don't have enough components wide enough. But inside the deployment planner right here, uh, once it uh, once it decided this is the cluster uh, that I want to place my um, uh, VMs in. Then it will go to the storage allocator and says, "Well, this 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 many storage pools in in this cluster. Uh, select something for me uh, uh, to 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 place." Yeah. 
I, I, I don't think it's on. In the case where you are there 100 VMs, is there a maximum rate at which, you know, how many per second can you create? Is there, a, is there a bottleneck? Let's say you're not copying the image because you already have the image. Right. I, so then on the, the, um, uh, the determinant factor there would be how many requests total. Uh, oh, that's it. Uh, right? How many re how many requests and how many threads available in the management server to do it? Uh, uh, so you can increase more management servers, and we will actually uh, be faster in terms of our management server speed. And uh, the, um, the actual response time depends on it, it is a sum of all the resources executing its job. That we cannot do. Uh, but management server itself is sca uh, scale horizontally. Uh, is there? Okay, so then um, we get to server resource. Uh, so uh, for our server resource, uh, we, I mean, I, I, I kind of already talked about uh, it being a translation layer between cloud stack and, and, and the resource API itself. Uh, it is communicated only in, in, in uh, JSON, and everything is, is, is passed through like that. There's, there's not an actual Java API call. Um, and it may be co-located with, with the resource. And because it may be co-located with the resource, it has no access to the database. Uh, so so uh, the commands that are, are sent to it needs to contain everything and, um, uh, that, that um, it, the resource needs to execute that particular command. Um, um, sorry, is there any questions about our server resources? And then there's, there, there, there are DAOs. And I think there, there's actually quite a few confusions about our, our DAOs. As, um, we wrote our uh, database, um, our, our, our own ORM, mainly because we don't want too much functionality in our own ORM um, uh, area. Because uh, CloudStack actually is a, 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 is an execution engine. And it really needed a, a lot of um, uh, direct access to the database. As, and at the same time, though, we do not want to uh, 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 have everyone write their own SQLs because a lot of our guys actually are kernel developers and they have no idea what SQL means. And, and so then, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> so, uh, so then um, uh, we write these uh, DAOs that allows it. And the problem, um, the thing that caused confusion is that uh, then a lot of people who, who are, a lot of developers who are writing code that, that is above the kernel layer are started thinking, oh, our DAO is our, it is our uh, ORM for the entire product. Uh, and, and they started using it. And, and it's, it's sufficiently good enough for people to use, but, but it is, it's not really meant to be used that way. If you were uh, writing things to, to do more scanning inside a uh, cloud stack da uh, database or get more information in a different way, I, I, or do monitoring in cloud stack, uh, use your own, own, own uh, ORM and figure, figure out a different way to do it. Uh, uh, it's, it's not necessary to actually uh, use the DAO. Uh, but if you are writing things for, for our kernel, then you really need to think about uh, our, our, our DAO support. And, and I wanted to show it here so that people can, can see what, what, what can be done. Um, and like I said, we have no support for complicated features for, for, for prefetch and, and, and things like that if you're familiar with JPA. Uh, but we do use JPA annotations. Um, Oh, and by the way, uh, Hibernate has been ruled out because the licensing doesn't make sense. And so don't use Hibernate. Uh, find, find a different ORM. And I'm open to suggestions. Uh, but that's, that's a licensing issue. Uh, so for example, if you, if, if you really wanted to add something and, and to CloudStack and, and uh, CloudStack schema, and, and there's something that needs to be done on inside the kernel, or uh, access inside the kernel, then this is an example of how you would add our uh, add, add a DAO into our system. Um, you know, our standard uh, Java entity being in with, um, with with its annotations, and then you create a DAO that inherits from um, generic DAO interface, and then you inherit, and then your implementation extends generic DAO base, and then and and that's it. Because unless you're doing searching, if you're doing searching, then you have to write your own search queries. Is, but if you're not doing any searching, then generic DAO base has all the, all, all the code that, uh, 
um, just find by ID and, and, and things like that to retrieve those. And you don't actually have to write any of that code. And you don't have to write the SQL for that. Any questions? Now, so actually we're gonna, this, this is gonna be a part of the uh, high availability portion. So it's 12.30, okay. So we're gonna end the presentation on here. Uh, any questions at all? Comments? Okay, I guess lunch is served, huh? Outstanding. So, folks, if you uh, if you exit this door here and walk 